I'm in <gasps> India, but I ain't wearing no bendy, no. You're crazy, out your mind, you think I'm speaking Hindi, huh? I got mad pictures of auto rickshaws. I'm in India, son, I'm in India. Greetings from the Indian subcontinent. Might I pose an interesting question? Yes, do you know Ganesh, the Hindu god of wisdom and removing obstacles? He's the one with the head of an elephant. The Hindus worship many different animals. Monkeys, snakes, even rats in some areas. And these guys, of course. Holy cow. It's a holy cow. Yeah, sorry about that one. These sacred beasts are highly respected. And that's why you can't find them on a menu. A lot of the time they're allowed to roam wherever they please, do as they wish. Whether that be eat from piles of trash, drink from open sewers, or wander through traffic. India is host to many different religions. Hinduism is by far the most popular. But there are Muslims, Buddhists, and even Christians. Turns out, India has one of the oldest Christian communities in the world. Here's Samir. We met him outside the post office while we were waiting for our ride. He was very inquisitive, asking us what we were doing in India and what we thought of his country. And of course, he invited us to church. The other day, we visited a Hare Krishna temple during afternoon prayers. It was a beautiful temple and the music that was playing was very spiritual and, and soothing. Within a few minutes of being there, a member of the temple began explaining to me the joys and beauties of being a follower of Krishna. I introduced him to Trent and went on my merry way. Hey, I had some recording to do. Overall, Hinduism seems pretty chill and laid back. You know, you accept your karma, you enjoy reincarnation, and don't run over any cows. That actually might be the hardest part. I mean, check this one. He's laying down next to the center divider of a busy road, probably making life tough for these guys. The auto rickshaw driver. These men are possibly the bravest drivers in the world. Challenging cargo trucks and buses with their three-wheeled, two-stroke diesel engine, one headlight, zero seatbelt vessels of public transit in a land where traffic laws don't even seem to exist. An auto rickshaw is only one step above its distant electric cousin, the golf cart, of the genus Lamus and Gamus Americanus Manabinus. The rickshaw has evolved past the need for a fourth wheel, increasing its agility through India's thick traffic flow. It has developed a thirst for diesel fuel, but has retained an open-air cab, free of doors or restraints of any kind. In a severe accident, occupants are jettisoned from the vehicle directly into their next lives, possibly as a butterfly, a sacred cow, or maybe the cosmos will deal out a thrilling yet ironic existence in an auto rickshaw driver. Traffic here is horrible. Sometimes the congestion gets so bad cab drivers actually shut off their cars, get out, and wait. When things do move, no one pays any attention to the lane markings, and the cars get so close you can reach out and slap the other driver's high fives. Here it's drive by the horn, stay alive by the horn. Horn OK please is painted on almost every cargo truck. Most of the time your horn is the only way for these behemoths to even know that you're there. I think to hold a license in this country, you're required to honk your horn at least 40 times a minute. At least. Here's an alternate mode of travel, gigantic, coin-operated, mechanical, dog. It took a little while to tame this beast, but you know, once I got the hang of it, I started showing off a bit, performing rodeo tricks and such. And the girls, man, they couldn't keep their eyes off me. I mean, you know what they say, ladies love the big dog. Oh.